Giorgio, so I think we can get started, no? Yes, let's get started, yes. Socialist World Government Socialist World Government The previous video featured a document from June 2022 showing that diplomats and activists working for various NGOs, spearheaded by the Stimson Center, are planning to reform the United Nations in the near future, perhaps with a major overhaul. A telling sign of things to come is renewed dialogue about holding an Article 109 UN Charter Review Conference, a kind of constitutional convention at the international level. Significant alteration of the UN's structure would presumably require such a conference. But it gets more interesting. In their draft agenda, these experts raise the prospect of replacing the UN altogether by creating, quote, a new successor organization with a new charter, similar to 1945 when the UN was created and the League of Nations was dissolved, end quote. In August, a summary and a video appeared showing more details of the discussion for taking global governance to the next level. Reading from the summary, quote, Could beneficial changes be done within the current UN framework, perhaps by initiating a smaller set of focused and strategic amendments to the UN Charter or deeper transformations, or should another organization be created to gradually replace the UN due to the substantial changes needed to ensure a workable international security architecture? Article 109.3 of the UN Charter foresaw the holding of a general charter review conference within the first 10 years of the Charter's life, an event which never took place. The experts discussed whether it may be time for such a conference to be finally held. End quote. It goes on, quote, but will the P5 ratify an amendment that eliminates the right of veto? If not, will not the only remaining option be to dismiss the UN and establish a new organization? There was a two-thirds majority that voted for all the UN General Assembly resolutions condemning Russia's aggression in Ukraine. This majority constituency of states could initiate either a charter review conference or an establishment of a new organization." End quote. In addition, a spreadsheet has appeared, shedding yet more light on plans underway for strengthening the UN. In it are discussed three proposals, reforming the UN for increased effectiveness, rethinking the UN system and its place, role in global governance, and drastic revamping of global governance. Here's an eye-opening item. Revive the ideas behind the new international economic order. I take this to be a reference to an early draft of the United Nations Millennium Declaration in 2000, which contained a controversial proposal that was subsequently removed. I'll have much more to say on recent efforts for UN reform in future episodes of this playlist. We'll explore the history, philosophy, and personalities behind these plans. There's even a religious and spiritual dimension as well. For now, listen to these excerpts from June's web conference. Notice the emphasis placed not just on amending the Charter, but on the possibility of replacing the UN altogether with a new world body. Please like, subscribe, share, and stay tuned. It's turning out to be a momentous decade. Thanks for the privilege to, to get this uh, started, this event of today, on the occasion of UN Charter Day 2022, which was a few days ago, the 26th of June. On behalf of the two co-organizers of this event, the Foundation for Global Governance Sustainability, of which folks of which I'm the executive director, and the Global Governance Forum, of which Augusto Lopez Claros is the executive director, would like to welcome you to this discussion. We we'll hope uh, will be a lively one. I just wanted to say a few things about the charter uh, that um, on the 26th of June. 1945, it was signed. To give the new Security Council power to deal with breaches of the peace, the planners of Dumbarton Oaks propose that it shall be free to act anywhere in the world 
at any time. And we have to realize at what time that happened, which was the end of the Second World War, but not completely. Zero minus two, zero minus one. The equivalent of 15,000 tons of TNT has rocked the Earth, lighting observers seven miles away with its glare of a hundred suns, then dimming as the enormous familiar mushroom cloud billows skyward to a height of 40,000 feet. Japan at least had not accepted its defeat yet. I mean, it's before Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Hiroshima, seen from the air after the atomic bomb blast that virtually erased this city of 340,000 people from the Earth. As far as the eye can see, stretch scenes of desolation and ruin. Four square miles leveled by one bomb, the product of allied science and a climactic answer to the terror and aggression let loose upon the world by Japan. It had started to be negotiated before. There was the UN Conference on International Organization in San Francisco that culminated in this uh, charter and its signing. So it was uh, certain circumstances uh, that gave rise to this charter. As Mr. Truman arrives, 63 days of concerted international effort are climaxed by the signing of the United Nations Charter. First to sign is China, the first nation that suffered Axis aggression. Dr. Wellington Ku signs with a traditional Chinese brush. So it's remarkable in some ways how it survived for all these 77 years, although it may be showing its age now. And we are going to talk about that. It was not the first instance of a world constitution in a way. It was the second iteration after the covenant of the League of Nations, which had preceded the United Nations, and which uh, the covenant was part of the Treaty of Versailles of the agreement that ended the First World War. The Allies built on that. They tried to correct some of the problems of the League that had led in only 20 years to another world war. And from these discussions, there has emerged a blueprint for a new international organization. And indeed, they managed at least to avoid a major global confrontation for the next 77 years uh, till our days. Now we feel that we may be witnessing a third world war starting sometimes, hopefully not. And uh, hopefully it won't be the unraveling of the UN uh, or whatever it is, it won't have the cost in human lives and, um, and destruction that the Second World War is, and we will go to better days soon. The restoration of international legal order is our joint task. We need peace. But in the League of Nations, everybody had a veto. Uh, every country, because of the unanimity principle, could stop decisions. In the Charter, we have the realization that some countries are more equal than others, so while in the General Assembly, everybody has a vote according to their capacity as sovereign state, in the Security Council, we have the five veto yielding powers, but which was a lot less than everybody in the League of Nations. And this worked more or less up to a point, uh, but recently we saw again that the veto um, uh, uh, is impeding some serious decisions in the, on the Security Council. So there are ways of doing it if there is the political will, but of course, it would be better if we had had that um, review conference 10 years after the adoption of the Charter. According to Article 109, at the latest 10 years, there should have been a re review of how the Charter works and amendment of the provisions that don't work, but still, that never happened. And the problem is that if we try to amend the Charter, the five permanent members of the Security Council have a veto. So. Uh, yes, uh, they, they do have privileges that uh, perhaps are impeding the work for the future. So abolish it or go to something completely different. I suppose this is a part of the discussion that will be had after this introduction. Thanks a lot. We have a massive anxiety that what happened to the League of Nations may be happening to what we built afterwards of the United Nations. Are you ready for a new world order? <laughs> 